Watch way back machine one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Looking for Lucy, Groucho, Martin and Lewis, classic sci-fi? We have them all here on Classic TV. Way back machine one. Subscribe today. Classic TV. Way back machine one. From Television City in Hollywood. Chrysler Corporation presents Jack Benny. Co-starring Nanette Cabre. Tommy Ray. Making a special guest appearance, Rory Calhoun. Starring in Power of Stars. Brightest stars of Hollywood, brought to you by Chrysler Corporation, maker of the five great cars of the forward look. Plymouth, Don, DeSoto, Chrysler, and the exclusive Imperial. Chrysler Corporation. The forward look. And now, here is your host, Bill Lundigan. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to Shower of Stars. Tonight, Chrysler Corporation is proud to present the six greatest names in the automotive industry, Plymouth, Dodge, DeSoto, Chrysler, the exclusive Imperial and the expensive Jack Benny. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. How did you Thank like you very my, much. Uh, How did you like my introduction, Jack? Well, Bill, I thought you were trying to be nice. I mean, comparing me with the new Chrysler Corporation cars, but I don't know. I didn't think it was quite appropriate. You mean because you have more mileage on you? <laughs> no, I I wasn't thinking. I wasn't thinking of that, and I'm I'm sorry you were. What I meant was that uh, if uh, I mean if you're going to compare me with something, I I should imagine it'd be better to compare me with, say, other comedians who happen to be in my class. Well, Jack, that might be a little bit difficult. After all, who is there in your class? Oh, now, wait a minute, Bill. I mean, so silly. I mean, why, there's, um... Oh, no. no, he wouldn't be in my class. But there's... No, he's not in my class either. Gracie is funny, though. <laughs> and, well, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I, you might be right. I mean, I don't know of anybody. Do you? Well, yes, come to think about it, there's Jerry Lewis, Red Skelton, George Goebel, Jackie Gleason. Oh, are they in my class? Mm-hmm. Sid Caesar, Bill Silvers, Danny Thomas. All right, you can go now. <laughs> Eddie Cantor, yeah. Jimmy Durant, so long. Danny Cantor, Ladies and gentlemen. George Burns. Ladies and gentlemen. Groucho Marx. All right, you can go. <laughs> you know, uh, ladies... I wish he were on the Lucky Strike program so I could fire him. <laughs> you know, ladies and gentlemen, five days from today will be the national election, and everybody is quite excited about it, and so am I, because this year I have rented out my house for a polling place. You see? And so for those of you who live in my district, I want you to know that I have two booths in my living room. You see, and it's very modern. When you step in to vote... For an extra quarter, you can have your picture taken. <laughs> and then, as long as the curtains are closed, you see, for another dime, you can take a shower. <laughs> and because of the national regulation, naturally, the, the polls will have to close at 7, but the showers will remain open till 10. <laughs> so please don't forget to vote and bring your own towel. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, so much for politics. And now to get on with the show, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure now to present to you one of America's greatest singing entertainers, Mr. Johnny Ray. Now, Johnny... Oh, well, Rory, Rory Calhoun. Rory, uh, listen, I, uh, I, I introduced Johnny. I thought Johnny was supposed to come out here. Oh, well, Jack, you see, uh, you know, I come on so much later in the show, uh, and, and when I come on at that time, I sing a duet with uh, Mary Costume. You know? Yes, I know. I know that. Well, being as I do come on so much later, I thought it might be good for the show if I came out now and, and uh, told a couple of jokes, you know. <laughs> Well, Rory, I don't know whether that would be practical. You see, you're a, you're a dramatic actor. I mean, you're not a comedian, is it? Well, that doesn't make any difference, Jack. A joke's a joke. You know, when I was on location a few weeks ago, I told a joke that got a real scream. I was making a western. Oh. Well, um, Rory, you see, I've heard western actors tell stories before, you see. And experience has taught me that what passes as a big joke in the old corral somehow straightens out and dies as you bring it in the house. <laughs> well, Jack, I, I think in this case you're wrong. You see, this is, this is a kind of joke that uh, almost anybody could tell. Almost anybody? Huh? Yes. Well, all right, you can, you can tell, tell the joke. Thank you. Well, you see, this certain circus was in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, and they were closing that night, and the giant in the circus was saying goodbye to a friend of his. And the friend said, well, where are you going next? And the giant said, I'm going to Cincinnati. And uh, the friend said, well, gee, that's wonderful. He says, I have a, he says, I have a brother in Cincinnati, and I'll call him and, and have him invite you over to dinner. <laughs> so a few days later, the giant was in Cincinnati, and he called the, the uh, friend's brother, and sure enough, the friend invited him over to dinner. Well, about 7 o'clock that night, there was a knock on the door, and the dinner was all ready, and this uh, friend's brother opened the door, and there standing in front of him was a little fella about four foot high. So the fella said, well, well, who are you? And the little guy says, I'm the giant in the show, in the circus. And he says, the giant? Why, you're only four foot high. And the giant says, well, gee, can a guy take a day off? <laughs> Is that the joke that almost anybody can tell? <laughs> well, almost anybody in your class, like Herb Schreiner, Lou Costello, uh, Steve Allen. Oh, I've heard about that already. <laughs> you know, show business is so amazing. I mean, everybody wants to be something else, you know, like dramatic actors want to be comedians, tell jokes, you know. <laughs> Comedians want to play Hamlet. Now, I've always been different about it. All I've ever wanted to be was a violinist in a class by myself. <laughs> that I made. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, as I announced uh, before, we have this great singing entertainer, Mr. Johnny Ray. <laughs> Falling since you went away The sun, the sun ain't shining Every cloud is gray And so I walk And I whistle And I walk Just to walking in the rain How we met Torture in my heart By trying to forget Just to walk in in the rain So alone and All because my heart still remains. 
remembers you People come to their window Walking They always Walking. stare at me Walking. Walking. And they're shaking their heads Walking in sorrow Walking. Saying who can that fool be Just walking in the rain How we met Knowing things could change Somehow I can't forget You've got it. Isn't this a lovely day to be caught in the rain? I think I've got it. You were going on your way. Now you've got to remain. Just walking in the rain. Thinking how we met. Knowing things could change. Somehow I can't forget. Good afternoon. I'm the stagehand for Cameron's on the new cars from Chrysler Corporation. The reaction was terrific. These cars are new. For weeks, all we've been able to do is to tell you about the newest new cars in 20 years. And now, for the first time on television, here's proof. Chrysler Corporation's styling leadership. The newest new cars in 20 years. In styling, they're completely new. The 1957 Plymouth with the new shape of motion. The 1956 Plymouth, not just a revised silhouette, but a completely new shape in car. New, lower than ever. This year, 
The Plymouth is as much as five inches lower. In fact, in the low price field, it's the lowest belief. New, more room, more comfort. And here is the new Plymouth Convertible. The 1957 Dodge. The 1957 Dodge with the new shape of motion. New, much greater visibility. The forward look windshields are bigger than ever. And see how that slender roof line flows into those new swept wing fins. The 1957 Dodge is all new. Featuring Fire Sweep, a new low-priced DeSoto series. Unlike some others, every 1957 Chrysler Corporation car has changed the front end, but completely ahead of its field, modern. The 1957 Chrysler. 1957 Chrysler with a new shape of motion. Chrysler Corporation, leader in automotive styling. Smaller wheels, bigger tires, lower and roomier bodies, more glass area, wider seats, higher fins, completely new. Now, Imperial, proudest expression of the forward look. They're at your dealers right now. The newest new cars in 20 years. And now back to Shower of Stars. I just can't figure out what's wrong with this thing. Try the phone again, will you? Sure. Oh, there. CBS hello, CBS hello. City. Hello. This line's all fouled up. Hello, hello. Boy, these wires are really cross. Well, the trouble must be up in the main board, Ed. We'd better go on up there, because we'll be on this all day long. Say, uh, whose dressing room is this, anyway? Jack Benny's. Jack Benny? No kidding. You know, if you ask me, there's a great comedian. Why, I can't think of anybody in his class. Are you kidding? There's Pinky Lee, Sammy Levinson, Wally Cox. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Then there's Red Buttons, Gary Moore, Robert Q. Lewis... Georgie Jessel. <laughs> Georgie Jessel? <laughs> He's a singer. <laughs> hey, I hope my telephone is fixed. I want to call Rochester to see how I like the show so far. I mean it sincerely. Alice, you are the most... Hello, hello, hello. ...girl in the whole world. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Van. Hey, this and I want you to keep the necklace on the convertible. But I hey. couldn't. I just couldn't keep the necklace in the convertible. Why not? What's wrong with they giving you a lot of right. gifts? Why? That's all. I mean, what would people Come in? think? I don't care how people Jack? think. Huh? Oh, well, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's all right, Bill. But I really the lines are crossed. I do it's all right. It. My, my lines are crossed. What oh. is it? Why, uh, why don't I ask you something? What? Why aren't you going to do this sketch with uh, Nanette Fabre? Well, the reason I'm not going to do the sketch with Nanette Fabre is because the show is too long. And that's oh. the only thing I could cut. I've said it before, and that's all I can cut. Now, oh. I'm sorry. I'll see you later. Well, ladies and gentlemen, at this time we had intended to present a playlet featuring Jack Benny and his very lovely and talented guest, Miss Nanette Fabre. However, as Jack said, the sketch was, show was too long, so we had to cut the sketch out. Personally, I have my own ideas as to why the sketch was cut. It happened uh, yesterday in Jack's house. Gee, I wonder if it's right for me to do this love scene with Nanette Fabre. Gosh, there might be too big a difference in our ages. She might... Nah, she's young enough. <laughs> and I'm sure she won't object doing it with me. I don't know why she should. After all, I look pretty good for my age. After all, I'm, I'm the only one who knows, really knows how old I am. 
I'm not going to blab. <laughs> All right, so I got a wrinkle or two. Eh. What does it mean? <laughs> Hello, Bill. Hi, good morning, Jack. Well, what's on your mind? Well, is Joey Lewis, Arthur Godfrey, Art Link letter? Now, cut that out! <laughs> anyway, this is yesterday. All right. <laughs> what are the voting booths doing here? Oh, I'll explain that on the show tomorrow. You know. Now, what, what's on your mind? What's the truth? Well, I wanted to talk to you before Annette Fabray gets here. Oh? As you know, she's an outstanding comedian, Jack. And unless you're awfully careful, I'm afraid that she's going to steal the entire scene. Bill, don't worry about me. I can take care of myself. Nobody's stealing any scenes from me. You know, when it comes to tricks, you're looking at the old master. All right, all right, Jack, I know, but I also know... Look, Nana, Bill, will you friend? stop worrying about it? If I'm not concerned, you don't have to be. Okay. Well, that might be her now. Oh, Miss Fabray, come in. I guess I'll be running along and let you two get on oh, with wait the a script. Oh, no, no, wait a minute, Bill. Stick around. You, you might learn something. You know? Oh. Right, now, sit down. Sit right over there. Oh, Miss Fabray, will you sit right here? Please? Oh, fine. Thank right, you. And we'll discuss this play. Now, tell me, Miss Fabray, uh, what do you think of the script? Well, to tell you the truth, Mr. Benny, I think that I'm just a little scared. <laughs> scared? Why? Well, I'm kind of scared of you, Mr. Benny. You see, you're so talented and famous and wonderful and... Well, I think that I'm just sort of overwhelmed by it all. <laughs> well, I, I can understand that. I, but um, <laughs> why don't you relax and, uh, you know, be at ease, Miss... You don't mind my calling you Nan, Oh, you? please do. <laughs> well, Nan, look, just pretend that I'm no different than any other great artist that you've ever worked with. <laughs> and uh, call me Jack. Huh? Uh, huh? I think so. Jack. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get along fine, really. I'll just get the script and we'll start on the play. You know, I've never worked with Mr. Benny before. Oh, he's the old master. Now, in this play, now remember, we're married. You see, I'm Philip and you're Penelope. Mm -hmm. You see, and this is our house. This is our living room. You see, and I'm an author and I've just finished the first chapter of my new novel. I'm all excited and I come in and tell you about it. You see? So you be uh, old tidying up the house or anything, just working around any place right here, and then I'll make my entrance. Huh? Fine. Uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> you ready? Yes. Oh, darling, I've just finished the first chapter of my new novel, Tropical Love. Isn't it wonderful? Yes. <laughs> now, look, look, Nanette, you see, you're not supposed to say anything there. You see, just stick to the script. All you have to do is nod your head. That's all. Because, you see, it, it's, a, it's a, uh, a suggestion of fulfillment, you know, a gesture of fulfillment and happiness, and you're, you're proud to be a part of it all. So you don't have to say anything, you know. Just nod your... You got it? Mm -hmm. Don't worry. Bye. <laughs> oh, darling, I've just finished the first chapter of my new novel, Tropical Love. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> See how much better that is? And darling, Penelope, you know, I've, uh, I've written the most beautiful chapter I believe I've ever written before. I want you to hear it. The silvery moonbeams in the sultry August night shone like shafts against the vivid hues of the Tahitian sky as the dancing shadows, accompanied by the beating of the native tom-toms, did a rumba around the lazy blue lagoon. <laughs> That's it, honey. Doesn't it give you a thrill? Yes, dear. <laughs> Look, here, the script just calls for yes. You see, you don't say dear at all. You see, we've already established the fact that you're very much in love with me. So adjectives are unnecessary. You, you understand that now? Yes. Ah, you'll get it. She'll get it. She'll get it. Though. She's fine. Now we'll go on with the play. Oh, Penelope, darling, I'm so tired. I guess it's because of that all-night session I had last night with my literary agent. He just wouldn't let me go. Oh, now here, in this next scene... Uh, uh, Jack, what? as long as you've stopped the rehearsal a minute, would you mind if I, uh, if I asked you something? No, no, go right well, ahead. You know this telephone scene that's coming up next? Yeah. Well, Jack, that's 
That's just not me. I, I don't talk that way, and I was wondering if you'd well, mind if I... Well, of course. I mean, if, if it doesn't... If you're nervous about it, if it doesn't fit you, put it in your own vocabulary. Well, in other words, you don't mind if I change a few words? Why, certainly not. I mean, anything just so you feel at home. Oh, know? thank you. <laughs> now we'll start the scene. The great trooper, isn't he? Now, uh, now, let's see. In this next scene... Oh, yes, the phone rings. Now, let's make off the phone is right over there, you see? Yes. Right in that area there. Ling-a-ling-a-ling. Ling-a-ling-a-ling. Ling-a-ling. Hello? Oh, Gloria, darling, how are you? Brace myself for what? My husband out with another woman? <laughs> I don't believe it. If my husband was out with another woman, you can be sure that it was his mother. <laughs> what? According to the script, that was supposed to be a wrong number. <laughs> Gloria, his mother is very young looking. She happens to be a stunning blonde. What? Well, they were parked up there because she happens to live on Mulholland Drive. <laughs> and Gloria, I wish next time you get your facts straight before you jump to conclusions and accuse my husband of philandering. Goodbye. Look, man. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. His mother isn't young looking. She looks old for her age, and she's 83. And not only that, she's not a stunning blonde. She's as bold as an eagle. <laughs> and last night, my husband was out with his literary agent. Oh, just wait till I tell that husband of mine. Come on, Jack, that's your cue. Now get on your toes, Jack, on your toes. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I, I missed my plate. Excuse me. Oh, that's all right, Jack. I'm learning something. <laughs> oh, Penelope, dear, I'm, I, I'm back with the last chapter. Never mind the last chapter. What were you doing last night up on Mulholland Drive? How do I know? <laughs> last night, Mulholland Drive wasn't even in the script. Now, <laughs> don't try to be agent is the blonde. Penelope, please. Penelope, please. Penelope, please. Don't you, Penelope, please me, Philip Pendleton. <laughs> what? Oh, no. I'm not going to try to say that again. <laughs> Twelve years. Twelve long, glorious years of marriage. Twelve years out the window. <laughs> <laughs> I've done more talking in a public library. Oh, my dreams of happiness. My dreams of happiness were like castles in the air. Castles that vanished like a puff of smoke. Like that. It's light up time. Enslaved, worked and slaved like a poor little drudge in your house. I washed your clothes, I ironed your shirts, I scrubbed your floors. Poor little drudge, I was scrubbing your floors. I sold your clothes, I mended your socks, sewing patches in your clothes so you wouldn't be ashamed to be seen with those high society friends of yours. And I did it all for what? So that you could take some blonde upon Long Holland Drive and have the nerve to come back here and tell me it was your mother. <laughs> it's Penelope! I don't care. <laughs> Who do you think you are, anyway? Uh... <laughs> Nanette, Nanette, I'm terribly sorry. Nanette, Nanette, I didn't mean to make you cry, really. I'm sorry. <laughs> Take your hands off me, Philip Pendleton. <laughs> oh, you're still acting. Oh, I, thought, I thought... The minute that I went out and got a job, got a job working ten hours a day to try to help make ends meet. And I did it all for what? Why did I do it? Why? Tell me why. Well... No, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> because fool that I was, I was a fool. But now, fool that I am, I know full well what a fool I was. <laughs> Stay there, Jack. Stay there. I'll answer the phone. <laughs> Betty Foy, Jr., Rudy oh, Bass. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Jones of the Chrysler Corporation, he wanted to be sure tomorrow that on the, on the Shower of Stars that you and Bill Lundigan were emphasizing the fact that the Chrysler's coming out with the newest new cars in 20 years. Also, he wanted you to particularly emphasize the torsion air ride, the new shape of motion styling of Flight Suite 57, and the to total contact brakes. Also, you have to be sure to say that the new Plymouth is lower and longer with a more powerful, more economical V8 engine. He said all that, Jim? <laughs> oh, there is more, but I'll... 
I'll give you the details later. And to think! <laughs> to think that I gave up my career in the theater to marry you. Why, I might have been a great opera star. Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? I know full well wherefore thou wert. Thou wert up on Low Holland Drive with thine blind literary agent. Now wait a minute. I shall have made myself into the darkness of despair. Oh, I must have been a blind fool not to see what was going on behind my back. Wait a minute! <laughs> It was always George. Who's George? <laughs> it was always George and me. Or is it George and I? It doesn't make any difference as long as it was the two of us. Oh, George, George, darling, George, I love you madly. <laughs> He's not even in it. He's got a better part than I have. No, 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 don't say a word. Don't say a word, Philip. Don't even try to beg me to stay. Don't beg me to stay. I'm going to leave you, Philip. Goodbye, my darling. Think kindly of me, Philip. Goodbye. I'm going up to George. It's George that I know. <laughs> got another wrinkle. <laughs> I was just standing there and I'm wringing wet. Maybe I'll go upstairs and take a shower. Now I can take one here. I've got a dime. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why I refuse to do that scene with Nanette Fabre. <laughs> oh, she's a lovely girl, and we get along just fine. And now we have quite a novelty number. Uh, Miss Mary Costa, the beautiful girl who represents who, uh, the Chrysler Corporation cars, and Rory Calhoun, who tells a joke that almost anybody can tell. <laughs> a very duet they're going to do together. Come out here, will you, kids? Will you, uh... Did you have any trouble uh, rehearsing this duet? Or? Oh, no, Jack. You see, uh, Rory and I have worked together before. Yeah, Jack. Uh, Mary and I just finished a picture together for Pine and Thomas called oh. The Big Caper, and uh, we did a duet in that, too. Oh, and that's the number you're going to do here? Huh? Well, well, no, Jack. The song we're going to do here is, is altogether different. Well, I can't understand, then, why you mentioned the picture. <laughs> well, Pine and Thomas will understand. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, I... I imagine they will. Well, go ahead. i got to go back and see if my phone is fixed. Yeah, I hope Alice Aww. got her convertible. <laughs> we belong to a mutual admiration society, my baby and me. We belong to a mutual admiration society. I think he's handsome and he's smart. 
I think that she's a work of art. I say that he's the greatest man. And likewise, I'm her biggest fan. I think her kisses are like wine. His kiss is just as good as mine. And that's, that's the way, way we pass the time of day. My baby and me, oh, we belong to a new I say, yo, oh, you're the sweetest one. I say, no, you're the sweetest one. She thinks that I'm a natural wit. She says it's just the opposite. The, the only, only fight that we do is just who loves you more than who. And we go on like that from night till dawn. My baby and, and me, me, oh, we belong to a mutual admiration society. Now, I do not exaggerate. I think she's nothing short of great. I say that kind of flattery will get you any place with me. The way we carry on it tends to just embarrass all our friends. And that is how we'll still be this from now. My baby and me, oh, we belong to a mutual admiration society. My baby and me, we belong to a mutual admiration society. My baby and me. New York have been telling me that you just don't talk like that, but I like to hear it, so tell me again. Oh, but it sounds so cold over the telephone. No, it doesn't. Oh, tell sweetie, her, just a minute at the doorbell. Just a minute, I'll be right back. Uh, how did she know? Oh, it's this door. <laughs> oh, come in. Come in. Hi, Jack. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry I didn't know you were on the telephone. No, no, I, I actually am not, uh, Johnny. I mean, but, you know, I've got cross wires and I'm having a ball listening, you know. Jack Benny, I'm surprised at you. A man your age listening to somebody else's private conversation. Well, at my age, listening isn't bad, you know. <laughs> Jack, the reason I came oh, over to talk... Wait a minute, I lost them. I lost them both. CBS Television City. Mr. Arthur White calling Mr. Stevens. Mr. Stevens? Mr. Stevens? Yeah, he's the, he's the head of CBS. CBS? Yeah, we'll get to find out what's going on. Oh, we'll get some real low down. Yeah. Go ahead, please. Hello, Warren. Hello, Arthur. Look about that matter we discussed yesterday. We're going to have to do something about getting rid of him. Some poor slob is in trouble. <laughs> yeah, there's no use waiting any longer. His work on the Lucky Strike show is so bad, it'd be useless to keep him on. The poor slob must be on the Lucky Strike show. Maybe it's Don Wilson. And his work was just as bad on Shower of Stars. Now, hold the wire a minute. I'll get out his file. Gee, it can't be Don Wilson. He's not on the Shower of Stars. Gee, I, I wonder... It must be some poor slob on, on both shows. Excuse me, Jack. I, uh... I could be. Just thought of a couple things I have to do. If you excuse me, I'll go now. <laughs> I wonder... Yikes! I'm the slob they're talking about. Oh, yes, here it is. We've been getting complaints on him for the past two years. Yes, it's going to be quite a shock to him, though. He's been with us a long time. Well, doesn't that mean something? I mean, the, the years of service I've given the company? Why can't they hear me? Well, Arthur, he's, he's had it coming. There's no room for sentiment in this business. But, but there is room for sentiment. His work has fallen off so badly, it isn't funny anymore. But look, Mr. Mr. Stevens, why can't he hear me? I am funny. I mean, people laugh at me. They scream. No, we'll just have to look for a younger man. Younger? I'm 39. <laughs> what do they want, babies? <laughs> All right, Arthur. We'll let him go. I'll send him his notice in the morning. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, pardon me, sir. We've got our tool. You know, Mac, I just thought of three more. No kidding. Who? Well, Ed Sullivan, Bob Cummings, Ed Wynn. Now, get out of here! <laughs> From Chrysler Corporation, the greatest engineering advance of the year, new Torsionaire Ride. And what a ride it gives you. A ride like this has just never been possible before. Other cars still go around corners like this, leaning and tilting. Yet with new Torsionaire Ride, you can take even the flattest corners flat. There's practically no lean, no tilt. Gee, you don't have to worry about bumps. A girl can put on her lipstick and be sure she gets it on her lips. The bumpiest road becomes smooth, like a highway. 
What's more, when you come to a stop, with new torsion air ride, the uncomfortable dip and dive have been eliminated. New torsion air ride. Well, it looks to me as though if I don't start saying 1957 Chrysler Corporation car instead of 1956, Benny and I are both going to be out of a job. Ladies and gentlemen, the 1957 Chrysler Corporation cars have more engineering advances than any other line of new cars. And they're definitely the leaders in automotive style. So, before you buy any new car, see your dealer and drive one of the newest new cars in 20 years from the forward look of Chrysler Corporation. And now, back to Shower Star. Ladies and gentlemen, here are Miss Nanette Febre and Mr. Johnny Ray singing, I Flip! When we're in a special situation, we try to be adult, adult and smart. But something starts to give, and gives us where we live. And all of a sudden, we're suddenly falling apart. We flip, we flip. Like sponsors when the ratings start to slip, we flip. Do you get excited at a wrestling match? Nah. And does the wrong decision make you sore? Why, sure. And do you act like someone from a booby hat? Certainly. I get a funny feeling. Your senses start in reeling. And all at once you're doing things you've never done before. We flip. We flip. Like Benny when they stick him with the tip. We flip. Do you cause a riot when a circus comes along? And do you lose your marbles when they play your favorite song? And when you're near a pool, you simply have to take a dip. We flip, we flip. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. I have no desire to start declaring war When an Elvis Presley record's played And often when I'm passing by a record store I hear this fellow singing And I start highland clinging I run into the storm by each record he has made For the money, for the show We'll get ready now, go can't go for do- you know I can't be found Sit home all alone You ain't nothing but a hound dog You cry all the time You ain't nothing but a hound dog In the rain Yeah I flip I flip Like when my old man had my sideburns flipped He flipped Are you uncontrollable when something makes you mad? And are you inconsolable when something makes you sad? And do you laugh your head off when you read a comic strip? We flip We flip
can't understand it. I just can't understand it. Well, Jack, uh, don't you feel any better? How can I feel better? Imagine being fired after all these years. I mean, what's the matter with my agent? Why am I paying him 9%? <laughs> Give me an aspirin, will you please? Well, Jack, you, you've already had eight aspirin. Well, get me another one. I don't care how much they cost. <laughs> you know, I can't believe it. I never thought I'd see the day that Jack Benny couldn't get a job. Wait a minute, Rory. I've only been out of work three minutes. <laughs> well, this is all so sudden. Didn't you have any inkling of it at all? Well, if I, if I had any inkling, wouldn't I put away some money? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jack. Jack, you're kidding. Everybody knows you're loaded. Sure, loaded. So I've got some stocks and bonds. Both in the bottom drops out of the market. I mean, where am I then? How about your real estate holding? All right. Suppose there's a flood in Philadelphia and Beverly Hills and Texas and Boston. I say, and, and it's all ruined. Yeah, yeah, Jack, but what about all that cash you have? I need that for emergency. <laughs> you know, it's not easy to feel sorry for this guy. What? Well, Hello, everybody. Uh, hey, hey, the Mr. boss. Hey. Hello, Mary. Hi, Bill. Hello, Rory. Uh, Jack, I just wanted to stop by and tell you how much I've enjoyed your shows lately. That lot of good that's going to do me. <laughs> like cutting a man's throat and then telling him he looks good and red. <laughs> well, I think perhaps that Jack and Mr. Stevens might like to be alone. Well, we'll fine. see you later. Bye, 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 Jack. Stevens. Jack, what did you mean? Look, Mr. Stevens, you didn't have to come over here now, you know, just to gloat. Gloat? Yeah. It's a fine thing. After all the years that I've given to your company, all, have you no heart? I mean, I'll admit that I lie a little about my age. Maybe uh, I'm not as funny as I used to be. My work has fallen. Is that a reason to fire me? For heaven's sake. What are you talking about? Look, don't play cat and mouse with me, Mr. Stevens. Look, I have cross wires. I heard you and Mr. White talking over the phone where you were going to fire me. Fire you? Why, you're the last person in this company who'd ever be fired. You'll never get away from us. I won't? Of course not. When you heard us talking on the telephone, we were discussing Charlie Watson, the head janitor. <laughs> the janitor? Yes. Yes, he's getting so old now, he can't do his work anymore, so we, we're going to pension him off. We hate to do it, though. Why should you hate to do it? <laughs> I mean, if the man is too old and can't do his job, that isn't your fault. <laughs> You're running with this. <laughs> I mean, there's no sentiment in business. If a man can't do his job, fire him. Fire him, I say. You're running a business. Let him go. Fire The way people have reacted to that new style. More than a new silhouette, it's... A new shape of motion. New shape of motion in all five cars of the forward look. Completely new. The 1957 Plymouth. Compare the fins. Those fins. They're the keynote of our styling leadership. Styling that others are trying to follow. Compare the new Lotus. Remember, the entire body is new, as much as five inches lower. Twin light styling, really new front grille. The 1957 Dodge. The new Dodge. That's right. Everybody does a double take when they see this new shape of motion. Completely new styling. 93 models, 417 color combinations to choose from. The 1957 Again, styling leadership, plus completely new performance. New torsion air ride is a completely new idea in suspension systems. 
with a completely new transmission, the new push-button torque flight transmission. Smoother, swifter acceleration for greater control in every driving range. New power, too. New V8s with greater all-around performance. And here's the proudest expression of the forward look. This year, introducing an Imperial Converter. Imperial is the finest automobile. No matter what price range or model you're interested in, find the styling leader, the best value, among the 93 models of the Forward Look, the newest new cars in 20 years, the 1957 Plymouth. Dodge. DeSoto. Chrysler. And the exclusive Imperial. They're at your dealers now. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you all enjoyed the show. And next month, the uh, Shower of Stars will have their annual Christmas show. And then I'll be back on January 10th for the Chrysler Corporation. Say, Jack, I just happen to think of three more. Bert Lard, Donald O'Connor, Mickey Rooney. I don't care what you say. You, you, can't, you can't make me mad now. I'm in too good a mood, you know. All right. But now that you've seen all of the new Chrysler Corporation cars, what do you think? Bill, I think they're just wonderful. I don't know of any other car in its class. Let's see you do something with that, wise guy. The Hour of Stars has been brought to you by Chrysler Corporation. The forward look. Portions of the preceding program were pre-recorded. Wayback Machine One. This is your old pal, Dino, inviting you to subscribe to Wayback Machine One, the best classic TV shows and movies, all right here. Yeah, like Dean said, watch us together, both in my classic TV, Wayback Machine One. <laughs> Watch classic TV on Wayback Machine One. We'll take your hand on the showbiz land and we'll bring back fun to you. Come watch with me, we'll watch, we'll watch away. Come watch TV on Wayback Machine One. Just stay right there and we'll keep you square and we'll bring back fun for you. Watch TV on Wayback Machine One.